Welcome to our channel. Today we're diving into a controversial and eye-opening topic. The top states in the United States where immigrants are facing the toughest restrictions. Now before we start, let's be clear, no state can legally ban immigrants outright. However, what some states can do is make life so incredibly hostile and difficult for immigrants that it feels like a ban in all but name. We're talking about a tangled web of laws, regulations, and practices deliberately designed to make living, working, and even just existing as an immigrant in these states about as enjoyable as a root canal performed by a drunk badger. Stay tuned as we reveal the state's leading in anti-immigration enforcement and discuss the profound impact on immigrant communities. Because, and let's be clear about this, making life harder for immigrants doesn't just hurt immigrants, it hurts everyone. Let's start with Arizona, a state that seems determined to win some kind of most aggressive anti-immigration measures award. They've been at the forefront of this for years, passing a series of laws that frankly make you wonder if their legislature spends more time brainstorming ways to target immigrants than they do on, you know, actual pressing state issues. One of their most infamous laws, SB 1070, allowed law enforcement to demand proof of legal residency during routine stops. Now, on paper, that might sound reasonable to some. But in practice, it basically encouraged racial profiling. Imagine you're just driving down the road, maybe you forgot to signal a lane change, and suddenly you're being questioned about your immigration status. It created a climate of fear in immigrant communities, made people afraid to even leave their homes for fear of being targeted. And what did this law achieve, apart from making Arizona a shining beacon of intolerance? Well, not much. Crime rates didn't magically plummet, the economy didn't suddenly boom. In fact, there were significant economic downsides as businesses struggled with labor shortages and boycotts. Arizona lawmakers love to talk about border security and protecting jobs. They'll show you grainy footage of people crossing the border and claim it's a full-blown invasion, all while conveniently ignoring the economic realities of immigration. You know, like the fact that immigrants often take jobs many Americans won't do and contribute significantly to the economy. And let's not forget the impact on Arizona's Latino population, many of whom are U.S. citizens or legal residents. They were suddenly viewed with suspicion, subject to harassment and discrimination. Imagine living with the constant fear that you, or someone you love, could be unfairly targeted because of the way you look or the language you speak. That's the reality Arizona created. And for what? Political grandstanding? A misguided attempt to look tough? Whatever the reason, it's clear that Arizona's approach has done far more harm than good. Next, we travel to Texas, the Lone Star State, where everything is bigger, including, apparently, their anti-immigration zeal. Texas has been in a race with Arizona to see who can enact the most draconian immigration laws, and frankly, it's a close call. One of their most notable pieces of legislation is Senate Bill 4, also known as the Show Me Your Papers Law. This law, passed in 2017, required local law enforcement to cooperate with federal immigration authorities. Essentially, it turned local police officers into de facto immigration agents, forcing them to ask about immigration status during routine interactions like traffic stops. Now, supporters of this law, much like their counterparts in Arizona, argue that it's necessary to deter illegal immigration and keep communities safe. But again, there's little evidence to support these claims. In fact, many argue that such laws actually make communities less safe, as immigrants are less likely to report crimes or cooperate with law enforcement if they fear being deported. And the impact on Texas's large immigrant community, both documented and undocumented, has been significant. Imagine living under the constant threat of deportation, even if you're just trying to go about your daily life, working, raising a family, contributing to your community. It creates an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty that permeates every aspect of life. But it's not just undocumented immigrants who are affected. The law's vague language has led to racial profiling, with Latino residents, regardless of their citizenship status, being unfairly targeted. Imagine being pulled over for a broken taillight and ending up in deportation proceedings. That's the reality Texas has created. And for what? What problem are they actually solving? It's a question worth asking, especially when you consider the economic contributions of immigrants in Texas. They're entrepreneurs, business owners, taxpayers. They contribute to the state's economy in countless ways. 
Moving on to Alabama, a state with a long and complicated history. And sadly, that history includes a fair share of discriminatory policies, with anti-immigrant sentiment being no exception. In 2011, Alabama passed HB 56, a law so restrictive that even other states known for their tough stance on immigration were like, whoa, Alabama, maybe you need to chill out a bit. This law, often described as one of the harshest in the nation, sought to make life so difficult for undocumented immigrants that they would, in the words of one state lawmaker, self-deport. Let that sink in for a moment. They were literally trying to make life so unbearable for human beings that they would voluntarily leave the only homes they knew. The law had far-reaching consequences, affecting everything from housing to education to health care. Landlords were required to verify the immigration status of their tenants, effectively making it illegal to rent to undocumented immigrants. Schools were mandated to collect data on the immigration status of their students, creating a climate of fear and distrust in classrooms. And then there was the impact on the economy. Farmers struggled to find workers to harvest their crops, businesses lost customers, and the state's reputation took a hit. It turns out that when you create a hostile environment for a significant portion of your population, it has negative ripple effects throughout the entire state. But the most devastating impact of Alabama's anti-immigration law was the fear and division it sowed within communities. Now let's head to Georgia, a state that loves to boast about its peaches and its Southern hospitality. But that hospitality, it seems, doesn't extend to everyone, particularly if you happen to be an immigrant. In 2011, Georgia jumped on the anti-immigration bandwagon with HB 87, a law that, surprise, surprise, aimed to make life difficult for undocumented immigrants. One of the key provisions of this law allowed law enforcement to check the immigration status of people they stopped for traffic violations and other minor offenses. So imagine this, you're driving down the road, maybe you're going a few miles over the speed limit, and suddenly you're being questioned about your immigration status. It's like something out of a Kafka novel, only it's happening in the land of sweet tea and pecan pie. The law also cracked down on businesses that employed undocumented workers, leading to raids, arrests, and a climate of fear in immigrant communities. Imagine living with the constant worry that your workplace could be raided, that you could be separated from your family and deported, all because you were trying to earn a living. And let's not forget the impact on Georgia's agricultural industry, which relies heavily on immigrant labor. Farmers struggled to find workers to harvest their crops, leading to lost revenue and higher food prices. It turns out that when you make it harder for people to work legally, it has negative consequences for everyone. But perhaps the most insidious aspect of Georgia's anti-immigration law was the message it sent, that immigrants were not welcome in the state. Finally, we arrive in Mississippi, a state known for its blues music, its southern charm, and unfortunately, its long history of discrimination. In 2012, Mississippi enacted HB 488, a law that, you guessed it, targeted undocumented immigrants. This law, much like those passed in other states, required law enforcement to check the immigration status of people they stopped for minor offenses. Now, Mississippi lawmakers argued that this law was necessary to protect jobs and prevent crime. But critics were quick to point out that the law was nothing more than thinly veiled discrimination, targeting a vulnerable population for political gain. And they were right. The law had a chilling effect on immigrant communities, making people afraid to report crimes, access health care, or even enroll their children in school. Imagine living in a constant state of fear, afraid to leave your home, afraid to interact with anyone in a position of authority, all because of your immigration status. That's the reality Mississippi created. And for what? Well, there's no evidence that the law actually reduced crime or improved the lives of Mississippians. In fact, there's evidence to the contrary. The law led to racial profiling, with Latino residents being disproportionately targeted by law enforcement, regardless of their citizenship status. It strained relationships between immigrant communities and law enforcement, making it harder to build trust and ensure public safety. And let's not forget the economic impact. Businesses that relied on immigrant labor, particularly in the agricultural sector, faced shortages and lost revenue. The state's already struggling economy took another hit, all because of a law that was based on fear and prejudice rather than facts and reason. Thank you for watching. 
If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content on important social issues. We've journeyed across the U.S., shining a light on states that have chosen to implement harsh and often discriminatory anti-immigration policies. We've seen how these policies, often justified in the name of border security or protecting jobs, have actually done far more harm than good. They've created climates of fear and division, torn apart families, damaged economies, and undermined the very fabric of our communities. Let us know in the comments what you think about these anti-immigration policies and their impact on immigrant communities. Because this isn't just about immigrants, it's about who we are as a nation.